today because we're now in tier three london's in tier three we're in tier three and i'm late and i'm going to blame should i blame my guest no i won't blame my guest it's just how life is at the moment it really really is so firstly good day good evening good afternoon good morning howdy doody um, to everyone around the world, whatever time you start to watch this, whatever time, wherever you are, I'm sending out positive affirmations to you all. How are you doing? My normal phrase, how are you all doing? Um, I, I've had some wonderful messages in the last few weeks and I just want to say thank you to um, people who have been watching Um uh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep it very positive. It doesn't matter about detractors. So I'm gonna keep it so positive because this is what we're trying to do is build positivity in the world today. We're having, uh, our mental health is being attacked from every angle. With the next lockdown, people are losing their jobs. So I'm gonna start with this before I bring my very, very funny, warm, uh, I find her, so charming guest and i just want to start with this which is as i said um positivity to everybody people i've heard so much stories of people losing their homes losing their jobs and even when they've got a job come back they've lost the job again i just want to send out positive information just to keep the faith keep the faith keep the faith stay safe stay safe if you don't believe that there is corona, just at least stay safe. To people who have lost loved ones, I wanna say to you that it's hard. And I'm talking from a, a very personal standpoint. It's, I wish I knew the words to say, I wish I knew how to portray, how scary the thought of losing a loved one and when it really does happen so i'm just trying to put a positive spin all is not lost just please keep the faith because that's the only thing that's going to get us through this covid this time of our lives right now it's not all about going out it's really all about the affirmations in ourselves and how can we move forward and do better and make things better and understand that these are really troubling times. And if you're finding that you're struggling, because I did struggle, I struggled in the first lockdown, first part of lockdown. We're now in the lockdown three. So I'm able to cope this time round, even though I'm 10 stones fatter. And that's a whole different story matter. But the, the fact is that some of us are still trying to hold on to some form of normality of eating and getting that, you know, exercising and walking and doing all sorts of things. But as I said, you know what to do. Don't lose hope and don't lose faith. So let me bring it back to the show before I lose people and I'm going on about COVID because that's not what you want to hear. I know you don't want to hear about it because people, are, uh, to, to be honest, it's scary. So I know you don't want to hear about it. But anyway, welcome to today's show. And I've got the wonderful Debbie Allen, the author, um, the activist for Black Lives Matter. She actually works in one of the political parties, but I'll let her tell you all about that herself. Um, this is a woman who's a mom who does so much for her community. And, uh, you know, when I read her book, I'm going to divulge into that a bit later on. I was so impressed that I had no choice but to have her on my show, which is called Standing in My Truth. And I can see her in the green room, green, green room still tapping away on her phone. <laughs> how this woman puts all this work that she does working for the Labour Party and all these different um, you know councillors and and directors but I'm thanking her today for coming on our show I'm gonna bring her in none other than Debbie Allen the wonderful Debbie Allen please give a roar for her right now Not good evening. Thank you so much. Oh, it's and, my you know, pleasure. Let me, let me take full responsibility. We're late because of me. Um, 
sharing long link and then having to re um, send out um, that link to everybody. So thank you very much and um, good evening everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, this, this Zoom world has got us pulled left, right and centre and you could be anywhere but here. So if you're, yeah. you're here, <laughs> you're absolutely, you so absolutely, absolutely. No, thank you so much for coming on and you know, it's it's funny, you know, I've known you for a while. I've watched you. Um, there's days that you've cheered me up, I must admit, early hours of the morning. I'm thinking, why is this woman up? But, you know, you know, you've got someone here trying to say hi, Debbie, your friend Alison Woods in the chat room. Um, please, and, um, this, yeah, she's please so send her a big hi. Yeah. <laughs> you've got friends popping into the chat room very shortly. I think you should be able to see them at some point. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. But um, Debbie, I got you on the show because, um, as I said, there's mornings that I've woken up and you've cheered me up. You've always kept it real. Um, you're an articulate lady. I should say empress woman. Um, very articulate. Um, and you just know you keep, as I said, when I say keep it real, it's like there's days where no matter how you're feeling, you will just say and you're not hiding because you know you're a woman of culture and you don't it's not that you don't care it's that's how you express your story that's how you express yourself and for me i resonate with that and i know you resonate with a lot of people that you've worked with in your community so i want i want to know more about you and this is why the show is called standing in my truth and it's all about you so i'm telling you what i brought you here I now want people to know what I found out and get to know you too. Debbie Allen, please introduce yourself to Cyberworld. Thank you. Um, okay. Debbie was born in uh, Halston, Church Road. I grew up Church Road. And my dad used to call me Seamai. That was his pet name for me. And my mum used to call me Olive. So we were now from a very young age I was going to be a confused person <laughs> um, so, um, oh my gosh it, it was um I hate that was, you're static you're still a little bit static. it was a wonderful community um we had a Jamaican couple living above us and with an Irish couple living underneath us and I remember the men used to go out drinking on a Friday night and they would come back drunk and fight with their partners. And um, somebody's actually phoning. Can you believe that? Counselor. <laughs> you see, this is what happens when you're so busy. Can you uh, hello, Counselor, I'm sorry, but I'm live on the radio. So can I, can I come back to you, please? <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. Oh thank you God. so much. That, 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 when I tell you folks that this girl is hilarious, sorry, sorry. do not let her title fool you. She's gonna yeah. have stitches. No, no guest of mine has ever come on and go, oh my God, the counselor's on the phone. I'm sorry, I need, hello counselor. <laughs> You, you that's what we, do. We, we never answer the phone. Yeah, <laughs> and Wagwan and whatever. We 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 were well brought up by Miss Joyce, my mom, and you know she was always very speaky spoky. Coming <laughs> back to, uh, <laughs> will I will I have a job tomorrow? Oh my God! Hold on. Right. Um. So church so road. Let's go back to it. Let me take you back. Where yeah. were you born, Halston? And yeah. um, you, your parents are uh, Jamaican, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. they're okay. from um, Clarendon in Jamaica. That's the way okay. you pronounce it. Yeah, Clarendon. And, um, yeah. yeah, Clarendon. And so my parents broke up when I was very young. Um, okay. We lived in uh, Stonebridge for a while. Then we moved to Cricklewood. Then we moved, we moved around a lot. So one thing I knew, I knew that I wanted to get married and I wanted to have a house and I was going to never leave that home, that my children mm -hmm. were going to have stability. And um, 
and by the grace of God, I've actually been here for ooh, over 20 years. So, okay, you know, to... we're going we're gonna to come to that. Stick a pin right there. Yeah. Okay. You're now here. You know, you've grown up in Stonebridge. We'll come to the marriage a little bit later. And your children. Your, why you wanted to live here and have this house. Okay. School. So you've moved around a lot. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, as you said, you, you're schooling, etc. cetera. Um, what was your school like? Go, You know, what, what did you decide you wanted to do when you were like, you know, in your teenage years? What did you want to do? What was it you Teen thought you wanted to do? I always wanted to be a secretary part time. Really? And I, wanted be, and I wanted to be a wife. That's all I wanted to be. I really? was always in, always in Mills and Boone. I just wanted to be married, have children, and work part time. So make use of my qualifications. That was always in my head that I'm not going to be totally stay at home because I saw my mother work how many jobs, and she used to take us to work with us. Um, you know, if, if she couldn't get anyone to babysit we would be at work with her. And funnily enough, I've done the same with my children as well, because- Don't, um, go, don't go there, no, nope, no, nope. we'll come to that. I don't want to give it, you don't give up too much. <laughs> yeah, so school, school I, th I think I pretty much sailed through it because of my love of reading, where, you know, I, I, I was a learner. People would always find me in the corner some reading a book, I loved reading. Um, I think I always uh, questioned the teachers. Um, I remember an incident in home economics when we had to cook tea or something we ate at home. And right. I done salt, salt mackerel and dumpling. And, and there was an argument with the teacher about what was like, this is what we eat at home. And yeah. I, I was downgraded because I didn't do a typical, I don't know, roasting. Like sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, That's um, hilarious. Yeah. I can um, actually imagine you doing that, actually. Like, really challenging the teacher says, I'm sorry, that's not yeah. why I ate at school. Yeah. That, yeah. That's not why I ate at home. So, yeah. why are you telling me about tea? Yeah, yeah. And you it's know, so like, funny because of Black Lives Matter and everything that's coming out now, people are exploring different foods. But back then, it was very much... English mm. and my mum from the first generation very much gave up her culture because she was to fit in in um you know this was our country she had come back to the mother mother land and um you know like I said it was it, it was it was a very English upbringing in our mannerisms and whatever but we did eat um cultural food we had a mix we had in Caribbean and typically that's what I cooked at school because you know I don't remember the meat and two veg when I was growing up although we, we had the fish and chips but, you know so I cooked to what the teachers <laughs> told me no you what to do yeah yeah, yeah. you know we have let me stop you there for a second I'm, I don't know if it as I said there is definitely really bad static so, you know, I can see, I, I seem straight, but you know, you, you're, it's, I don't, I don't know if anybody else can tell me out there, it'd be really good because I'm trying, I can watch, I can see it. But, and I'm I'm, if, I, if I hold it, is that, I don't know if that's any better. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a Wi Fi thing. See, I can see what you're right. Your Wi Fi's just kicked back in again. So I do apologize. You know, the world has gone into lockdown. So unfortunately, static is what we're all getting. Um, you know, I, I'm wishing for the day that we come out of lockdown that I can have all my guests in front of me and interview them. But it doesn't matter. The main thing is that you sound perfect. So don't hold anything. Just stay right there where you are and express yourself. And I'm sure people will get the gist of it. Do you understand? It's yeah. really all about what you're trying to say. And we're just going to leave it up to God and the energy that this is what, you know, we're telling your story. That's the way we'll deal with it. Um, and you still look lovely. So, you Thank know, you. can I ask you a question? So when you said that you was at school and, um, you know, your let me go back. Let me say, say this again. You were saying that your mother wanted to fit in. 
is that what you saw you found that your parents did the, try to live the british way yeah. yeah in how so why do you say that um i in the in the way we which was funny actually because my mom she she never lost her jamaican accent or the way she spoke to us and we didn't understand a lot of the you know sentences she used to say but um let the house phone ring and it was always hi hello and you know what <laughs> speaky <laughs> spoky <laughs> yeah the speaky spoky <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The speaky spoky so yeah. she actually had so you found that um your parents and your parent and um, your mum used to literally try to live the English way and you're not alone I'll be honest with you Debbie mm. um, it, a lot of people were like that they mm. wanted us to have the British tradition um, even if you were born here your our folks wanted us to have that so mm. you know I'm glad that they did because I think that's what kind of it makes us solid people does that make sense mm. it makes you be able to I always say that um because of the upbringing of having a bit of the west indies and a bit of the english mm. it is it, it carved out how i could live and have a british way of living it mm. doesn't mean that i've lost my ethnicity do you understand mm. but it still allows me to don't mind the british way of thinking or doing the british things mm. but i don't lose my culture i don't lose yeah. sight of who i am uh, so i get that all right here you are. This is what you decided to do. I can't believe you wanted to be a secretary, but if I was to ask that to a lot of women of our age group back then, do you believe mm -hmm. that they would have said the same thing? Um, I think a lot of people wanted to be nurses. Um, do you know, we had a very horrible geography teacher that used to put us down. So I did see the ambition in my peers because every time we went into his class, he would say something like, um, oh, you girls from down there, you're going to push buggy. That's all you're good for. So really? because, we, yeah, because we came from uh, a certain housing estate, this man said this every lesson. And um, I remember when speaking to the careers officer and saying that I wanted to be a secretary, it, it was like I was being rooted to, oh, maybe you want to do nursing or, you know, but I always wanted to be a secretary or own a florist shop. I don't know why a florist shop, but I, floral I did do a floral arranging course. Um, but um, yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't really push us. In, and, and in fact, my cousin Carol had to come down and have um, a talk. Back in the day, it, um, it was normal for this kind of behaviour. Oh, God. I'm and um, what you're going to say. I passed my CSE English and I got a grade one. And I thought, oh, OK, I'm going to be doing A-levels. But they said to me, no, 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 you'll be doing O-levels. And I went home and I thought, no, I'm sure I'm supposed to be doing A-levels now. Went back uh, home, spoke with my cousin who came down and she told a teacher, she, she told the teacher, this is what I'll say. She told the teacher, she didn't mince her words about um, you should be encouraging it and, um, you know, raising her aspirations, blah, blah, blah. And um, well, they, they, they stood their ground because could back then these days oh, i think they'd probably you. you know help you give your way in but um yeah so they found a way to keep you back rather than yeah 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 back then back then yeah 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 that's awful i swear to god that is yeah. awful and yeah. I, it's it's scary to think that again you know women that of our age that back then the things that we are having to now do at a later mm -hmm. stage of life mm -hmm. to find out what we are, are capable of yeah, when we were pushed. Yeah, if yeah. we were given the opportunities yeah. back then, could you imagine? It would be too much. <laughs> it, 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 it would, it would be too much. Why so, I, 
um okay what what do i mean when i say that why do you say that we 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 are phenomenal. this is what i'm learning now we are phenomenal and back then because there wasn't diversity there, okay. there was just Amen. you're different yeah okay. and i think the way I, I don't know how caribbean people were perceived but i don't think we were perceived as being studious and definitely if you came from stonebridge you went from my experience you know being oh that geography geography teacher every day every it lesson sounds like it really yeah. stuck with you because you're yeah. it's like every time you think of that geography teacher yeah it, it kind of sets you back would you yeah. so you're saying that that has played that okay so you know we're talking about mental awareness and mental you know yeah. our mental well-being that yeah. has stigmatized you from the day that he told you that all you're going to be doing is pushing a buggy yeah do you understand yeah and when i'm looking at you and i'm hearing you speak and three times you've said that and it's like you and can't I, let I, I, would it say, I would say it even more I'm, I'm i'm aware of it um it caused confusion in my head so it it definitely affect it definitely affected me and i've spoken I, I to some tell. of my class, some of my classmates some of them have laughed managed to laugh it off some of them thought it was reverse psychology but i just thought it was cruel because here is a role model Model, a, a black teacher. It was a black Whoa. teacher, right? Wow. And it was, uh, it, 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 and he was, so it starts this Jamaican African thing. Bad enough that, you know, you're insulting. I can't even speak. Ma from. Mainly Caribbean girls, but um, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's this teacher who has looked at another woman of color a child of color we were, we were, yeah, we a were black kids. child you were children he yeah. should have been an inspiration yeah he should have been an aspirer yeah to your own culture and not stigmatize them yeah i'm shocked at that i'm, I'm not gonna lie and i've got anyone that ever watches this now or in the past i'm saying it do you understand? That is disgraceful. And I don't mean to forgive me for what I'm going to say because I try not to do the black and white thing, but mm. I expect that from a white teacher, mm. not a black teacher. I'm, 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 let me tell you what he's what he was trying to do. He was doing the British way, darling. I don't know if that helps you. All he was trying to do was be the British way, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And I'm really sad that that his words of a man that is in a position of power left words to that to this day that is you know still stigmatizes you yeah. but i'm going to say this to you let me tell you something as well okay i'm going to go back to your interview because i want i'm going to say this and so you can talk with passion right if that man did not say that to you and it's not reverse psychology i know your friends say that mm. do you think you'd be where you are right now oh gosh do you know i i didn't i don't think i set the bar high for myself all I wanted to be yeah. was married, yeah. work part time, and be a mum. So, whether I could have been a manager earlier in my life or started my own business a lot earlier in my life, who who knows? But you know, I just say that every, everything in time, it, you know, and sometimes you can rush for things to happen before yeah. time yeah. when people yeah. are ready yeah. when you're really not ready you know yeah. and yeah. and then you you get thrown off so um from school um oh, at, 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 yeah school then college at school i was a newspaper so i used to do a newspaper round for 
Martins in Crickwood. That's when we were living in Crickwood. We lived in Crickwood, I don't know if it was three to five years. And then I went to college to study French and Spanish because I wanted to be an interpreter um, and, and, and I'd done business. And I worked along uh, at Brent Cross Shopping Centre as a sales assistant. Okay. Whilst I was college. So always had this work ethic from, from day one I was born to work. And um, I probably, I think I had two jobs through college, cleaning and sales assistant. And um, I met my ex-husband at uh, Brent Cross. Um, th those, okay. those are really, those let's, are really okay. Let's do that then. Let's do this then. Let's do this. When did you decide? When did you settle down? So when you, you know, you, when did you settle down? Because I'm going to show you something. Um, but go on. When did you set? Tell me when did you settle down? Listen, in my head, I set. I settled down at 18 years old, but I, I, I didn't get. It. <laughs> But, and, and, I, and in my head, I'm still settled. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as you can say, from the time you left school, you were settled down. Old, you just want to get married. You just, don't care. You didn't care how that happened. You were just going to get married, right? Yeah, because we, we, we were living in Stonebridge and he was like, oh, we're not getting married till we work, till we move out of here. And I that's not fair. How are we going to move out of Stonebridge? It was a council flat. But, you know, I, I took on the extra jobs and, and we got married and we moved out of there. So, okay. What, yes, so, when did you get married? Do you remember the day? Um, all I know was the 15th of October. And the reason I remember that was because the week before the park, we went to take pictures. <laughs> they taken the hours away. <laughs> So, um, what, no, 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 this is you. It's always got, it's always got lovely flowers. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> no, that park it always has lovely flowers, and I was just thinking about the expense of having flowers. It's like, yeah, we'll be here, we'll be in this area, we'll take pictures, and it, it was a beautiful park. And the week that we rocked up with the wedding gang and everything, the flowers were and they're gone. taking the flowers. <laughs> yeah, because um, you know they turned the soil and everything, and it was it was kind of like we turned up. Like, where's the flowers? Where's everything? <laughs> had an abundance of flowers. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm so good to hear that. So you had your, yeah. and then you you got maybe, married. Maybe that, was, maybe that was a what do they call it of of. of that was the only <laughs> thing else that happened. You got we married. had a beautiful, we had I a beautiful honeymoon. You look so beautiful. You look so beautiful. You. Uh, you got married and you've had, you know, you've got how many children do you have? Three? Is it three? Oh, I can't disclose. I can't disclose. Okay. That. We won't just no, get you no had children. They won't believe me anyway. Yeah, so we won't get you've got you had children, you got married, you got children. And what job did you go into? Because you've obviously you're married, you've got all these, you know, you've got your children and you've yeah. still got to cope. And how many jobs were you still running at that time? Um, I was working full time at local authority. I used to go cleaning with my mum after work. And sometimes I do night work um, for a telephone company in um, Vauxhall. Don't ask me how I done it. You know, it was I just like when I, when I out, it's like how did you have so many jobs and go go uh, giving out tracks at the <laughs> giving out tracks at the weekend. Girl, I don't know how you do it. I'm not going to lie. How do you manage to have so many jobs? But here you are today, and this is where we're going to keep telling the story. So you've got these, how many different jobs? You're married. Um, did you still have the aspirations of what you're, you know, to write, to keep writing or the florist? And what was still the agenda that was still pushing through this marriage? It, it was just, um, oh, my God. After that, aspirations to write definitely went on the banner. Um 
it was about having a car every other year and going on holiday um, four times a year. It was just, and, and that really wasn't my aspiration, but in order to keep the home and husband happy, we, we I think we worked hard and we played hard. So, um, okay. yeah. And um, I know that you came to a point, and again, this is your story and I, I, I know your story and I'm not, I don't have to. So as I said, it's standing in your own truth, but at some point your, your, your marriage broke down. Yeah. And yeah. Hey, what, what would you say was the devastating effect? Because you've always wanted, because you've said in the beginning, I want to be married. I want to be not have a nice house. I want to have a good job. Did mm -hmm. that bubble burst? It burst up. I was the dutiful wife sorting through my husband's ex-husband's suits to go to the dry cleaners. This, this is what my life was like, you know, going going to work, lunchtime, dropping suits to the dry cleaners, after work, picking it up, then going on to going home cooking, going going to work. And um, somewhere in between all of that, I was doing a degree as well. So we'll talk what was, about what was the degree. Degree of what? What? What was the degree? Business, business degree. And, and we'll talk about the fight, the fight to get funding for that. But um, yeah, I was going through his um, suits, found a letter from somebody, um, a lady who was over familiar. Oh, I'm being so diplomatic. Anyway. I went Talk and your spoke truth, with, Debbie. Talk your truth. I went and spoke with my neighbour. I spoke with a work colleague about what to do. And um, I don't think I told my sister because I was so embarrassed. But um, and, and I was also pregnant as well. So it was like a, a, a double whammy. And, um, you know, got in contact with the lady, arranged to meet her to have a talk about, you know, what was going on. And um, the lady did come to meet me as um, arranged. Um, it was my husband that turned up asking me what I was doing there. And then before you know what was going on, um, we were having a, a little tangle on um, <laughs> Green, Greenford. <laughs> Greenford, um, Greenford Road, and um, so she contacted you. I had, I had my baby. I say my baby because um, he he went back to his mum, and um, we we did we did we tried we tried to um, reconcile, but for me it it was it was it was never the same. I could I couldn't trust him after that. I couldn't understand love and. I also had an affair because I wanted to see can can you really love somebody and do that and um that um affair was more for my my ego you know just to know that I was attractive and you know somebody wanted me but I just I felt kind of lost for many years because all I ever wanted to be was a wife a mum have a happy home and that it, that really destroyed me. I was a very, very bitter person. I was a horrible person. But you know, I, I was, yeah, yeah. And um, how how many years were you married? How many years? Oh gosh, we were together uh, seventeen, eighteen years. So, did he ever explain why he felt the need? Again, this is your story. I, I think, I think some some men have this thing of I love you, but I'm I'm gonna dip out. So it, it's it's nothing. She meant she meant nothing. But you know, when I spoke to this woman, she cried down the phone about I didn't know he was married, and I thought, oh my god, my my husband done that to her. I felt sorry for her <laughs> instead of feeling sorry for my world that was crying. So um, yeah, it was just. But um, that's how did that. I I don't know how I found myself after that. I was just, I think I was just going through the motions for for, for many, many years. And um, and then I think one day you wake up and it's just, 
let me do what I want to do. And so I started um, organizing family holidays and also holidays on my own. Um, took up maybe yoga and pole dancing and horse riding. This and, is what I was going to ask you. Is that why you started all, all of that? I don't know if it was revenge or just let me do, let me do me, let me do me, let me just anger, anger. And um, I'd also changed jobs. I was a manager somewhere else and it the, the roles were very pressured. So it was kind of like work, working hard and then physically working out hard so that for me, it was just some kind of balance. And it, so, it I mean, you mentioned that you did things like pole dancing because that, that was one of the things that, again, I saw through social media, um, you know, and... I get thinking, wow, this woman's brave because people associate a pole dancer um, within, the, within, you know, so I'm going to be, we're talking now, people associate pole dancing with the sex industry. Does that make sense? So, yes, of course, you know, of course. Yeah, they they associate yeah. it with that. So here you are doing this, mag, you know, it. let me tell you, listen, I've never tried it, but it's not easy. And I've stood against the pole, just mucking about in you know in a club, and just tried to hold on, and you slide down. I give you yeah. no, let me just bow right now that anyone who's seen Debbie War, you know Debbie Allen, um, pole dancing, or just exercising on the pole because it became a thing, didn't it? Did that, didn't it? As exercising yeah, yeah, on the yeah, pole. Yeah. But, yeah. but for me, that was that was my. I think, I think I was curious, and I, I was curious to find out what men found attractive about pole dancing. And I tell you what, I, I was dating somebody then, and um, I would say, "Let's go to." A, I would be pushing him to go to a pole dancing club because I wanted to see these ladies. I wanted to see the environment. And the men, I wanted to see why men were interested in it. And then, you know, I'd watch these ladies doing awesome gymnastics and I'd be nudging him saying, put a fiver in the, in the car. <laughs> <laughs> some, some of the men would only put in, put in a pound or two quid. And I'm like, do you know what she's just done? She's done acrobatics and gymnastics and whatnot. So, um yeah, I just, just found it. I just thought, wow. Then I saw you yeah, doing all yeah. this horse riding and and yeah. um you know just all sorts, just all sorts. So what you're trying to tell me really was you were experimenting. You were and just exploring. What you I, 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 going off the rails. I, I think I think I'd been uh, quite quite a good girl. Um I didn't upset my mum too much. I didn't have um madness through my my teens I was uh, I, I didn't never done drinking drugs or anything like that so um and the one time I tried to be a criminal it, it didn't work so yeah she, the one time she tried to be a yeah. criminal it yeah. Didn't work. yeah you know you know when you, you you you're not cut out you're not cut out to, to do the bad, <laughs> the bad thing so. thank you Jesus but she you didn't become a criminal giving, giving out tracks so yeah. So here you are, you, you, it's played, you've already had the trauma of a teacher that who should, as a, a male model for once, um, stigmatise with words. You've then had your own dream, which is to be this wonderful housewife, be a provider, have children, have everything at home. Mm. Only for the male aspirer in school to almost burst your bubble, but it didn't yeah. stop you from going on and doing a business degree. Yeah. And then you've met someone who you deeply adore, you deeply love, only yeah. for him to um, second guess yourself. Mm. And again, break the bubble of that you were building for yourself. Mm. No matter what you were doing, you were doing it for the, the, the that bubble and the love. Mm. You've let go all of that. And my question to you is, how did you get to, because you're on a different ground, you're on a different journey right now. What brought you to this journey? What was the, the straw that broke the camel's back? 
is what I you know. Say. Oh my god, a, a meltdown! And um, oh, actually, it's um, it's still traumatic. It, it's it's in this about, about to go to print. Um, okay. <clears throat> I've experienced racism and sexism, and um, uh, for the most part, I think I've been able to navigate it challenge it and you get your hush money and talk about it but i had um one experience where somebody was coming in to arriving at work before me and leaving feces and banana skins around the place and it was my role to do um checks around the building and this was happening so often that it became the norm. But on one occasion, somebody left a lump of poo on top of a hand towel, on top of a closed toilet seat lid. And I took a photo off and sent it to the trustees. And I said, this is what I come into. Why have you not got CCTV and stuff like that? And um, a, a, a short time after that, um, you know, I. I I had to take time off work and kind of deal with racism, the levels that, that people go to. And it wasn't just the feces and banana skin. It was kind of like breaking into the petty cash and um, that fell under my remit. And, you know, I was just scared that, oh, my God, I'm black. They're going to think I'm stealing money. Da, 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 da. So I'd be walking around with the people's money in my handbag and it was just it was so strange um because when i brought that home and be talking about my day my son would be like why don't you leave why don't you leave or my daughter would be like you're the manager can't you do anything you know and it was kind of like you know when you you have a title but you're you just i didn't feel like i had the power to do it because I was reporting these things and nothing was um, being done. So what um, I thought the law hasn't protected me so I have to be amongst people that will make make that make that you know give me the power or something I don't know I prayed on it I prayed on it I prayed on it and I joined um, West London. Actually, I joined the Labour Party first, and then I was, you know, uh, nominated as BAME officer. Well, there, there wasn't much choice really. <laughs> that was that was a funny one. It was kind of like there, there, was, there was no other uh, choice. I'm not saying anything. I'll come back to that. <laughs> Hinting at the lack of diversity. Right. So, yeah. Um, I'm gonna just. Okay. And, and then they, they they would send me to different places, different boroughs, um, Hendon and other to attend meetings. And at one meeting, I think I made an impact and they invited me back and ended up joining uh, Stand Up to Racism and doing uh, events and meetings with them and being um, promoted to become their co-convener. And um, partnering about, with. So, what did you do? So, are you when you go when you went to these meetings? Mm. Were you going there as an inspirational speaker and talking about your um, your incident? Always, always giving the black perspective, which um, oh, oh, right. It's funny that you know. I think wow, I've been in the UK all these years. How how do you not know that this is what black people go through? Even um, what was a shock to me. You know, um, where I live now, um, it's quite a residential area because we moved out of Stonebridge and I've been here for almost 20 years. And I even had to take a, a neighbour about five doors away to court for letting their dog. Uh... So there's always been this thing about poo, which I can't get my, my head around. But anyway, we went to court. This man was trying to talk about um oh I'll control the dog this that whatever and I just, just said to the judge you know I'm born in this country and I'm not going to put up with it I worked three jobs to live here in peace without people letting their dogs foul 
and um, that's how I got an injunction um, on on that neighbor. But um, back to Black Lives Matter and um, stand up to racism. We've collaborated on oh I don't know it feels like nine, but um, my colleagues tell me that it's more. Uh, nine events that we've done and we um, open up the platform for people in the community to talk their truth as well and um, there was a, a housing officer who reported um, a tenant that they had who um, you know people are posting feces through the letterbox and that shocked me because I thought 2020 what what, what has changed you know, so racism is definitely that happened a long time ago. That was something that happened in my my parents when they came to the to, to the. the, the you know, this is what that's what my brain. You know that um, we're doing these rallies, and are they about work? Are they about experiences people having? You know, a shop. You know, where they're being followed or whatever. But this was um, a Salian woman. Um, you know, experiencing that. Oh, and and. and uh, Back to the work uh, thing, um, I spoke with my pastor and she said, she encouraged me to report it to the police. She said, that's a hate crime, you know, because there were a number of other things going on. You know, the way the person was talking to me, um, I'd be listening to music, it, it, oh, what's that monkey music you're listening to, blah, blah, blah. So I reported it to the police. And do you know, I couldn't find a local station that was open because they've shut and them down. They've shut them down, and I drove left, right, and I just couldn't find a police station. Couldn't find one in Kilburn, Wilsden, or Harlesden that was open. And something in me just said, you know, this is the day that you're going to report it because you've endured it long enough. And I ended up in Charing Cross. And to you know report. what it's like to, to yeah to, to report to report this incident, and I I just drove and I said God you're gonna, you're going to take control, and do you know how hard it is to get parked in in, in London in the, in the West End and yeah people yeah. can just be in charge and everything, um, and I found there was a parking space two roads away from the police station, so I I went in and. Um, it seemed like the lady on the front desk didn't want to make the concern. So I said to her, do you have any leaflets about reporting hate crime? And she was abrupt and she was rude. And it was, I was quite calm. It's okay. I said, uh, I took her number and her name, wrote it. So I must have looked like a loopy person sitting there with a notepad just writing and I think maybe I'd been waiting over 20 minutes and a black officer came in and I just hailed him and I said, can I have a word with you? And I explained to him why I, how far I'd come. Let's say I'd come from Wembley, driven all the way from Wembley because I couldn't find a local uh, station that was open for some reason on that day. I don't even know if it was a bank holiday or something. There was something about that matter? day where parking was free actually. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I told him the story and he made a phone call and within a few minutes there were two officers available to speak to me and take a statement and um, it was a horrible experience because I wasn't feeling well anyway. They had torches shining in my face like I was the criminal and I was so calm. I just took their names and badge numbers and everything and uh, when I got home I formed um, an, an email to the, was it IPCC or something? And yeah, the IPCC, yeah, yeah. And I, I gave them my experience of coming there and the fact that even after Stephen Lawrence and recommendations and whatnot, that you guys didn't even have leaflets, anyone reporting a crime. So within a few days or something it felt like within a short time I got a telephone call I was asked to visit Wembley police station and they'll take a statement and once again that's an area hard to find parking but God blessed me that I knew people at a local church and it was like 
I'll leave the car here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, you go report it and come back and have a cup of tea with us. When I went in and I was waiting, a Somalian guy came in to report being spat at on the high street. And the officer said, asked him, first of all, before asking the guy his name or whatever, the officer asked the guy if he had a passport. And I I, I woke up. Yeah, I, I'd just been sitting there waiting to be seen. And I said, I'm sorry, why are you asking this guy if he has a passport? Anyway, I took, um, I just took his name and whatever. And just, this is what I do. And I just sat down, continued writing what I observed and how they were treating people and whatever. And the officers were ever so nice to me when my um, interview came went over, I took statements and there were other colleagues that came forward. And again, when I finished that interview, I sent in um, an email to their superiors about my experience of um, you know, watching what was going on in a police station. So fast forward to 2020, it's kind of bizarre to be um, encouraged to you know, get involved with the Met, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, you know, I could kind of like, you know, where do your loyalties lie? Is it being black or is it, you know, being a black <laughs> person working for them? But uh, I, mean, I, 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 I can't. There isn't anything to say that this is. A, so someone's just said that's disgraceful typical behavior from the met police mm. and i know that you work mm. alongside them but mm. you know you're the voice you're going in there now as a voice you know you now work and deal with anti-racism and uh, so you're saying the straw that broke the camel's back now these are the things that you're doing to make people aware yeah. to make people yeah. stand yeah. up and say that's not acceptable I'm yeah. not living like that anymore. And there's, there's, there's so much more that goes on. I just, um, I didn't understand why I was experiencing it because, you know, when you think you're a nice enough person, you shouldn't be experiencing these things. And it goes back to my style of writing, trying to write a book. I was angry with the poems. I don't want to, what, what do I know about poems? And I want to write my truth, but that was the way it's coming out. I think it was as if my body was saying, be kind to yourself. This is the way you get it out. I don't know, Alamis Lu, in, um, Caribbean um, yeah. poet, well known. I, I wanted to write a book, given the detail, given everything, everything. But it, the, my writings have come out as a poetry. As poetry, poetry. yeah. yeah. And, I have, and I have the pictures to, um, to me, it feels like I need the pictures to evidence, otherwise people wouldn't understand what I'm going through. Well, I'm going, or to, what I've been through. I'm going to bring that up right now, actually. Mm. Um, and how I'm going to come into that story is this. You, as I said, you're, you're, you're an activist. And before I actually, before I show the book, when the whole incident with George Floyd, this story, this whole standing in my truth today isn't all about you know, George Floyd and but this is about you and how you came to mm. be this author and wrote your book of poetry. Okay. But it had to be something that triggered you to do so. And so Definitely. this year has seen unprecedented where the yeah. you know community of and I'm not going to use the Black Lives Matter because a lot of people do not like the tag because they think that it's political and they think mm. it's attached to so many things. And mm. I, I I get that. Mm. So let's just say that black lives matter all lives bloody matter but in this instance this is what was going on black mm -hmm. lives matter it scared people it didn't know where people and it affected people's mindset it made them uncomfortable they didn't know what they were doing and for the first time people who have held on to a lot of anger over the years started to express themselves mm -hmm. but so i don't know about you i found that people were expressing themselves in a way that made them look like they had mental health issues. Does that make sense? Why wouldn't we? Don't forget. No, that's what I'm we, trying to explain. Haven't, we, haven't even, we haven't even healed, healed from post-traumatic stress of the slave 
um, you know, and the generational curse of all of that. Why would I not be an angry black woman with mental health issues or anger or chip on the shoulder? Yeah. Now that we know more about our history, yes, of course, we knew about Henry VIII, but we also, um, at my rallies where we talk about, um, you know, the UK is not innocent, you know, Sh Sean Riggs and everybody, the, the number of people who have died in police custody, even the ones that have not been listed, is, okay, so that's with the, the police side of things, but then looking at how we were packaged like sardines and reading stories about people jumping off the boat, you know, there's so much that the brain and the spirit has to try to make sense of. Why would we not be angry? Why would we that's, we what, that's not what I'm saying? So that when it took George Floyd for a lot of that to manifest itself and mm. come to mm. service. And mm. so what I'm you know, this is what I'm saying is that people could have been perceived as having mental issues, mm. you know, unloading the things that they've mm. read, unloading, understanding that their forefathers have suffered that and they've never had a voice to say, mm. I don't like that. How can they not do this mm. to you? You know, mm. and so, you know, it, you just get labeled that, mm -hmm. oh, just shut up and, you know, you black people go away and shut yeah. up, you know, but, the, the, you know, you, you've, there's got to be a way that we can still unload that anger unload it in such a way that the next generation would say okay i get it let's write it down let's speak it out which is what you're doing you're mm -hmm. actually writing it out there mm -hmm. you're actually holding rallies that are you know articulated mm -hmm. they're not there with violence they're not yeah. there they're, all they're doing yeah. is empowering yeah. the old and the young and the middle yeah. to come together to understand that let's not all of this happen again mm. let's do better to make sure that the next generation doesn't have to go through the whole george floyd thing yeah and, and it mean, comes with, it comes with educating as well because um um i was supporting them um, for sankofa down in uh, trafalgar square and um had been writing to the mayor in support of um you know the larger event that was going going on and i got a letter back from mr khan saying something about um there was going to be works on trafalgar square and my brain didn't even understand Do you know this man said no all i knew was that i'd written to my local councillors and persuaded them and to our wider group and persuaded them why black history was important and something said to me you don't need to go to trafalgar square you got a park over there. Hold it over there, and it it it, it just happened. Where, where's the where's the flyer for that? Have I got the flyer for that event? <laughs> I haven't got it near me. Um, yeah, and we just we just put um, and that is where Black Lives Matter. It drew the crowd. Um, it drew the the councillors who had previously been skeptic when they. Saw saw the turnout because I'm always thinking about my unity and it was like okay such and such sells shade but I like her this person does clothes let me invite her and do you know um that Sankofa event um where we had uh, Eric the Cutter Clement well-known um Splinters um hairdresser and CEO hey, of his yes, business yes, he came yeah. down he spoke about here phenomenal stuff that I didn't know about my hair. Yeah. He came, he spoke about hair. Yeah. We had um Mr. Ray Carlos playing um music. It was such a beautiful, peaceful protest that the police, they didn't even need to come out of their, their car cars. to say, you know, <laughs> what's going on here? He came over and he said, There's jerk chicken over there. I said, Go well, back to the back. we'll bring we'll bring you a plate. So um you know, it it, it 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 was just it was a day of education, and by sharing our history, Black history, people learnt something that learnt in school. 
you know, that of looking back at what's been done to us, we were, we are phenomenal people. A lot of things have been stolen. A lot of truths have been hidden. I'm not gonna say lies have been told. What it is, the whole truth has not been told, you know, and... Um, it's a very uncomfortable um, uh, subject for people. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to get uncomfortable. Yeah, it is a very uncomfortable, yeah, yeah. But exactly. But there has to be a way of, uh, I'm not asking us to dumb it down, Me, well, meetable mm. people. I'm just saying mm. that there is no reason. And I, and I, I find that um, the people, which I'm now coming onto your book, the people that leading up to that I've had conversations with, and I'm sure you have as well, that mm. we all, they they didn't see our color. They just, we were just all friends. And then once mm. we voiced that we're angry and you know, they, they didn't know how to take, they didn't have to take me. Mm. All of a sudden I lost friends. I, I mm. had, you know, and, and, and I kept saying, how could I not be your friend when I've, I've done nothing wrong? All I've done is mm. just stood up for my truth and said, this is atrocious. You can't be yeah. treating people yeah. like that. It doesn't mean yeah. that, you know, that, that my half, that my family's mixed race or whatever the case may be, yeah. that yeah. we are angry. And there's, there's a lot of us with dual, triple, triple heritage. Trust so me. You know, I actually can't say that I don't like white people because exactly. I, my, my, my grandmother, I'm told, was white. And so that's why we've got different um, shades of people in my family. I think what it is, we, just, we all have to learn of each other. We have to Absolutely. learn about our differences. And of course, we have to be um, compensated or reparated on what we've, what we've lost. We should, you know, as much as there are apologies, and, and this goes back to even, you know, the Windrush um, thing, that once there's an apology let, 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 let's fast track on how you're going to compensate and that can start a heat process because we need counseling we need to understand who we are we don't understand our greatness even now i don't even i know that i'm great i don't feel great the writing my writings um are just it, i think it was a form of healing getting involved um, in activism and politics, it's a way of trying to change the system. But I, I don't feel great. It's just something I feel that any human should do. When you see a wrong, find a way how to to be the change that you want to see. Mm. Someone's got to do it. And that's what you mm. stepped into. You decided that's what I'm going to do, step into, as opposed. I, I think God, 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 or the universe must must have planned it because I, I wouldn't have chosen the experiences that I've been through. I wouldn't have chosen them. You know, imagine you're going to check something and you pull the door handle and it's got feces on it, or you're checking a corridor which is away from the toilets, but there's feces. Um, um somebody smeared it across the wall it's like my brain's just thinking why is there why is there poo up here you know i wouldn't want to give that experience to anybody but um you know the the journey has to be for a reason and uh, i suppose it'll re reveal itself in time but well, i'm gonna come to your book let me come yeah. to your book on this one and the first one i'm gonna bring up is now, when I first saw this, please take the knee unfinished. So when I, I went out, I got the book and you kindly, you know, I said, right, I need to read this. And as you said, I thought, oh, I'm going to get this book. And what I got with these two, let me, it came with two and this was the first. And it's, let me do that. Let me just take this off for a second. And it came like that. And I thought, oh, I love this. And I love the little drawing um, because it was not what I expected. So let me give you my synopsis and I'm gonna say to you why I loved it. So I opened the book and I thought, oh, this is different. Limited edition. And 
your forward was different as well. And inside you've given us a forward, you know, who you are. And, you know, normally when someone gives a forward, it's just like little, you know, little paragraph and, you know, thank you to blah, 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 and the God Almighty and, and Ian Rankin and, and, um, and Dan, blah, blah, who's written the book. But you've gone as far as saying what you do, the committees that you're involved in, how you like to be a fundraiser, and you like baking fantastic cakes. And you came familiar with, you know, Debbie as yourself, writing poetry. And so decided that, well, you know, I'm going to write these words. I'm going to come to a lady that introduced you to this as well. I might, Let me read this, what you said. I myself, I am no poet, but totally approve the subject matter of Debbie's poems. This is what someone says. Which this is from, is Don't shush you. Don't, right? It springs from her heart and lived experiences. She says, I've been fighting against racism and fascism for 50 years. It was nearly 51 years ago when I became the founding president of the very first Asian youth organization in this country, the Indian Youth Federation in Gravesend, set up to oppose racist attacks by the so-called skinheads. Now, that's one of the things that you've written in your forward. It's a prefix. No one does that. But you've given kudos of why you started your book and your journey. Debbie is also known as a knack for talking to strangers at recent Black Lives Matters protests and getting them to sign up as, support, as supporters of the West London Stand Up to Racism. She said she became familiar with Debbie's poetry when she sent me a couple of poems to read and she was very impressed with your hidden talent. And with her permission, you sent her poems to a poet friend who recently published a book of their own. And he too was very impressed and persuaded Debbie to publish this works. She Thank signed you. mine for me. I don't think anyone can see it, but when I got it, I kissed it. And thank you, thank you for supporting. And it's all, I'm always gonna support your love. You dedicated the book to your mum, Joyce, and thank you, mum. And so if she does, make sure she read this part and I listen. Thank you, mum, for the times you used to tell me stories of corn sticking up in my foot. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> why? <laughs> I don't know. And you said, I love and I miss you, and to your children. And this is a bit that I find poignant. And to your ex husband, you actually put your ex. And I'm going to ask you why. Do you mind sharing that? Because as much as um, we divorced, um, I can't, number one, my mum liked him. My mum always used to say, if you're no one good for you, go back to him, go back to because they were old, old school. Yes, but, um, my mum did that to me. Yeah, yeah. He, he did... Yes, I am grateful that he accepted my madness because I think I think I was mad. What woman is holding down two, three jobs, trying to run a house, trying to study, trying to rave, you know, trying to be the sexy wife? I, I was just trying to be so many things, maybe too much. I don't know, but um, you know. We, we 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 had a we we had a we had a we had a good marriage. We did we did. I I I I enjoyed myself. He enjoyed himself. I just couldn't put up with the extra things. So, but I'm 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 grateful that um we walked down the aisle. We had children together, and you know he took me and my mad family on. So I'm yeah. bound to you. Because a lot of, and there are women out there, not a lot, not a few. I'm just going to say there are women out there that are still angry in their, from their broken up relationships and broken mm. up marriages. Yeah. And rather I, I than, had my business. Yeah. Yeah. I had my so, business with. Exactly. I'm sure you did. And I know I you did. did. You've spoken. But what I'm Listen, saying, I done I done the waiting to exhale. When when um when we finished tussling on, on group with my belly out here, 
I, I, um, I went to work, I finished my work. My colleague was, because uh, my colleague and I had gone down there for this lunch meeting with the lady the, who he'd been having an affair with. We went back to work and my, my colleague was like, I don't know how you're so calm. This lady is- No, 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 no. I was pregnant. I couldn't fight. I couldn't have an affair. I went home and I put laptops and suits in, in the big grey bin and set it on the fire. That was my waiting to exhale. I didn't even put anything out on the lawn to, to sell. And um, he was so calm when he came home. It, he's like, it, oh, I saw the fire brigade. And I'm like, yeah, it's your stuff. And he's like, but there was money in there was money in those suits, you silly woman. He doesn't. He, he was calm, you know. We 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 you know we did have temp this tempestuous the the right word, but um, the way he handled because there's there's a lot of men that would not have handled it that way. Yeah, but um, he, 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 he this is why I asked you. This is what, well, that's why I'm asking you. And, and I love the fact that you, no matter what your journey was, no matter what you both had, no matter how tempestuous it was, and you had your good. And Valerie Douglas is saying some lovely things in there. Hi, Valerie. I think she's in Jamaica. Hi, Valerie. Jamaica. Hi, Valerie. Um, the fact that you are writing your poetry is your first, is your limit edition. And you actually gave thanks to him. I'm so, you know, mm -hmm. thank him. Mm -hmm. Without the experiences of what you've gone through with him, it doesn't, it, 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 it's molded you who you are today. That's why mm -hmm. I asked you, I wanted to hear your answer because that's what I took from it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I, it endeared me to you, is the question, is what I'm going yeah. to say. Really. You know what, it, you can't, you can't be mad forever. Absolutely. You're so much lighter. When Absolutely. when you when you let it let, let it go let it go yeah because one thing can do that this, though no 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 let it go because you're you're blocking your blessings and I know that there there is there there is there is be, there's better out there there's better I'm out gonna, there there's so much I'm gonna better read so for people who don't have please take the knee unfinished let me quote the words on this it's Please take the knee unfinished. I'm going to bring it back up here. And I'm going to put this up just back on the screen because I want to just read something else again. Because it's not about just George Floyd. This is how you were feeling. And again, the woman that, um, I think, what was her name? Is it Miss Lynch? Miss Lynch? Is it Miss Lynch? There's a woman that you, that you went with the books when you first got it. I'll bring her up in a minute as well. But this is what you said. Set your timer. We're going to kneel for Floyd. The crowd at the rally graciously stooped. Who could be annoyed? How about you officers? Aren't you joining in? Yay, they had to, it would be a sin. Passers-by quickly knew what we were doing. All around the world, take the knee, ensuing. I, I, I love that. I love that. You read it so beautifully. Did I? And, and do you know? That, that is a real, real lived event. We were in Hillingdon and it was a big crowd. And these officers, they walked through the, the speakers. And then when it came to take the knee, I, I was I was angry because I thought that's disrespectful because anybody knows, well, anyone that's been raised Christian going to the churches that I went, when you have an audience, you don't walk through it. You walk, yes. you walk around the back around and they, they just walk through. So when we took the knee, I shouted over to them, aren't you taking the knee? <laughs> I don't know what it was. But... And, and, then, and, and they did, they did. Uh, this, is, uh, this is another excerpt. Now, she's got in her book, there's loads of really great characters that, be, you know, I love the drawings. Um, you, you spoke about what was going on across the world. And this is poetry. This is not a book full of loads of, you know, it's like, it's real poetry written so real. It's not, oh, 
fancy you know uh handwriting it wasn't like oh let's use um times new was it times new roman or courier it was exactly how you were feeling you wrote it you literally put it down exactly i'm going to put another one here's what this is one of the ones i took out and i loved how will anyone know if you don't talk how can there be healing learning and understanding if you don't talk your walk your journey triumphs and pain receive your accolades and bear your shame but it's not hurt it's not shameful to hurt you are human and this alien behavior must be drawn in the dirt wow to me this is why i call my show standing in my truth and when i read that i thought there it is how will anyone know if you don't talk how can there yeah. be healing, learning and understanding if you don't talk your walk? Your journey, triumphs and pain. Receive your accolades and bear your shame. Talk the damn talk. And this is not yeah. just about racism. This is not about George Floyd. What I took from this, you, can, you asked me my opinion because you asked me yeah. what did I get from reading your yeah. book. It was, please take the knee. But this book can also mean take the knee in your own life mm -hmm. as an individual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It resonates in such a way that I'm hurting and I need to address what's going on with me. Yeah. Not, not mm -hmm. just me, I'm talking about anybody that reads yeah. those words. And yeah. so when you spoke to me earlier and said, Oh, what did you think? I felt like you were talking to me. And I think oh. anybody else that reads that will, will identify with that. It felt yeah. like I knew what was going on across the world. Mm -hmm. I knew it was atrocious. But at the same mm -hmm. time, it was saying to me, well, what are you doing about yourself? Mm -hmm. Are you actually walking in your truth? Mm -hmm. And this is not what I expected. This was not what I expected. Mm -hmm. and so i found that i by the time i finished i thought shit i've kind of read this in like in one go i wish i knew that it was like i wish it was like oh it's a diary so it was after a while after i read it i was able to go back and read different poetry if that's what i wanted to hear today mm -hmm. and the bits that stuck with me so what i'm saying to you folks is this her book is poetry and it it touches parts of you that would trigger, it's a trigger. Your poetry is a trigger. And I love the sincerity and the honesty in please take the knee unfinished. It is not just, for me, it was not just about George Floyd. It wasn't just about, you know, the racial tension that we were going through. It was like you telling everyone, this is how I feel. And there's a lot that I need to bear Mm -hmm. How do I bear it? And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to bear it by writing my poetry. Yeah. So thank you did, did, you, did you see Sherry's write-up? Yes, um, yes, I did. Yeah. But, yeah. I'll, you know, I'm going to come back to that because I love that you're out, the, the, mm -hmm. your bit at the back. Yeah. That is so beautiful. Yeah. But thank you. let's go to this because I thought yeah. I was getting one book. Yeah. But I so now this <laughs> one. People are going to think, what? Two books. <laughs> PG, PG, no children in the room. Yeah. So this bit, this part that I'm coming to now, parental <laughs> violence. It is after nine o'clock. I'm going to Jamaica. I'm going to speak Jamaican now. It is after nine o'clock. So it is watershed time. Okay. I can now show this book. This book is called Entangled Ode to My Lover. Now, I don't know what lover you have, right? But what I love about Entangled, Entanglement, you know, Entangled Ode to My Lover was, it was like, it was a daily thought. It was like that day, you know, something's happened and you wrote about that scenario then, right there. And you didn't need to have a whole book to write about that scenario. It was just like one page. And then here's this one. Let me tell you my story. Let me give you the tea. Let me give you the black experience via poetry. 
I smile every time I think of the D. This is the man who set me free. I'm going to come back to that bit. He opened my chakra, lad. He even opened my core. The only man I could lay with and not beg for more. What, what does that? What does that? You, you, you know, you know when they, you know when they can't hit the spot, but you mean the one that can hit the spot? <laughs> okay, let me. Uh, so I don't know if anyone got that. The bit I like, I smile every time I think of the D. I ain't gonna call that out loud. Right, but that's what you know. I thought, oh, and it went. This is the man who set me free. I loved it because you were so honest that I know what I tell you how I uh, it's watershed. I just thought, yeah, she's getting the she's getting the things, and it was really good, and it felt good, and it was loud. It set our free, oi, and it trigger again. It triggers. Wow, have I ever had that D that good that it made me feel so free? You see where I'm coming from with that? That I love entangled ode to my lover. I'm not going to ask you who the lover is. I'm hoping that you're going to tell me off air because whoever it was, hey, here's another clip. I am in love with my lover. I'm in love with my crush. But we have to keep what we do on the hush hush. Yeah, I'd love something solid like a silver ring. But we're both afraid of commitment now, no matter how hard. Let me say that again. But we're both afraid of commitment, no matter how hard the heart sings. I'm grateful for the man who gave no half measure, who knew his work and left me feeling like his treasure. The kind of encounter that comes once in a lifetime. And I appreciate that once you were mine. Please tell me you were talking about your husband. I, I um, out of respect for no, anyone, do that. <laughs> anyone that I've been entangled with, because entangled in the title alone should tell you it wasn't my husband. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I, yeah. oh wow, folks, this book, this book, because I, I don't know if you get two for what, what I, she gave me two, right? But I'm telling you, entangled O to a lover, will awaken your fire and i kept it clean because i felt i actually felt embraced and i thought no I, I no. Can't, because if my no. pastor gets hold of it you know i can't be too explicit so it, that there that, was that, no, a clean, a clean no, version. no it left something for the mind to um desire it um i had the right word that i you know Oh God, you know when someone, when you want to be enticed, you let my mind work. You didn't put it down and say, here's what I'm giving you. You actually let my mind wonder, be imaginative, put me in a place that I'm thinking, oh wow. At the same time, be nosy, but but oh wow. And I loved it. I mean, as I said, I could, I could, I'm warmed with the memories. My armpits tingle. My body quivers. My my womb starts to flow chakra rivers. The D, the D, thank you for raising the throne. If only I could welcome you into my home. You came at the right place and at the right time. And I thank you for peace in my soul, body and mind. Yo, people, don't laugh, Debbie. Because I wish I wrote that. I wish I wrote that. Right, I could sing it, but I wish I wrote it, folks. I am not lying. You, if you want something to actually read, we're in quarantine again. If you've missed someone or you want to get on the phone and start to the dirty text in, how about read some poetry to your loved one over the phone? How about getting this book? Because this is what I found was really enticing. Um, I'm not trying to plug it for you. My, I've now told you, you ask yeah, me. What, I, need, I need to make money too. Of course, yes, plug it. I, you asked me, you asked me to read them and I did with pleasure. Actually, you didn't ask me. I asked you for the book. I said, can I have one? And I put my hand in my pocket and I bought it. It was money well spent. It was money well spent. What I'm saying to the general public is this. 
support support Debbie, support what she's doing. Now that I've told you what I think of your book, it's it, it accentuate, it's sensual at the set, as I said, it doesn't go over the top. It's not sm it's not smutty. It's like going back to the old Mills and Boone. You'd be rude, you know, listen to a woman being rude without having to say, well, John, you touched my very bone and you made my back tingle and glistened. And as the water falled out, it was, it's, it was that, but without all of what I just said. So if anyone wants to go back to the days where you read a good book, this is it, a good poetry that will awaken I don't care what menopausal, you start to lose your libido, that will help you wake up the libido. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just telling you as it is. Now well, that I'm talking you, they're, they're asking I, in the chat where they can get the book. If you, you text me, yeah. I will I will get the limited edition because the Amazon version is not as colourful. It, it hasn't got um, as many pictures. Pictures, let me tell you about authenticity, yeah? Those aren't their tunes. They are original yeah. pictures, which I've just um, made into um, cartoons. But um, that's my son taking the knee. And on the entangle, those are my high heels. That's the hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> was there. There's this one. I don't know if anyone can see it. There's this one where you've got, it's, it's like um, two champagne glasses. And... You know, that's a bit where I was, warm, you know, I'm warm with the memories. And I looked at that and it's it's like you're showing the memory of that night or that day, wherever you were. Yeah. And that's what brought the words and out. Every, everyone, everyone knows me. They know that I'm all I'm always taking pictures. So be careful, guys. Be my friend forever. Because I take <laughs> And look at this one. This is a lovely one where it's like you could, I don't know, that looks like you went to a very a quaint hotel. And you took that photo with, because that's an amazing bath. I love baths like that. Please tell me that's the bath in your house. Photo with your heels up. And, um, you know, this one is humming in the bathroom. I don't even want to wash off your scent. It's liquid gold. No, 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 they've got to buy it. They've got no more. <laughs> okay, okay. You see, that's as far as I'm allowed to go, folks. Because as I said, I could read this out forever. And it's really, really good. Tell me this. Tell me this while we're at that. Now that I've told you how I felt, why? Why the entangled oat to my lover? Why now? Um, a weight has been lifted off my shoulder. I've still got baggage like everybody. And I think we're all going to be, we're, we're all baggage. You can't offload everything, but of weight has been lifted off my shoulder I feel empowered that um, I've held I've instigated and facilitated successful anti-racism rallies and I've heard other people's traumas and I've adapted um, the scenario in, in that it's not just ah, black lives, it's just anger, it's yeah, protest, get your anger out, learn a little bit. Look, this is me with, with my bits of cardboard um, because um, I, I don't see why I should pay £700 for, you know, uh, notice boards. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, yeah. Are we going the right way? Yeah. Yeah. And um, this is what, I, and, and people have criticised them, you know, why don't you get proper stuff well it's it's also um, funding as well, you know, and getting refunded on time and stuff like that. But the more the point is, knowledge is is there. The knowledge, if you just read the bit of paper, it doesn't matter what the paper is stuck on, whether it's um, titanium or wood or cardboard or plastic. The the message is there that tells you about. Um, you know, Christopher Older, former British Army paratrooper who, you know, um, was dying and other humans were around him laughing 
Um, there's stuff here telling you about Roman Emperor, the land of Kush. The, you know, there's so many ways of um, imparting knowledge and supporting each other because it's for us, but, you know, if, if we talk about white fragility or uh, entitlement, if history continues to be taught the way it was taught, is being taught, then no, nobody will learn. There's got to be kind of like a level playing field. Okay, Henry VIII may well have conquered wherever, but the other story is, and he brutalized and raped and whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, give 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 the full story and yeah, also talk about as well. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So now you're you've you've also got another third poetry book in the mo in you know in the making. I think you can't this, this, this is the first uh, one. Sorry? This is the first one, but this yeah. one has too too much trauma for me. For me me there's too much trauma this is this is why I write the way I write it it is still trauma for me and I haven't been ready to um share this piece I've I've had to um you know really go through it and it, it, it's it's very personal yeah. it's important because you know when people think oh you're a manager you, you couldn't have been going through these as they say, um, the higher you climb, the lonelier it gets. And it's hard. It is hard to talk your truth because everybody's going through something at work. Um, I think I posted on Facebook about Greg gave 10 years to, you know, this airline act. Or he, he caught the COVID at work, was it for how many months? And then let from his job, no idea about his pension and whatnot. And he won't speak to, even though I've signposted him to the MP, emailed on his behalf, he's not in a place to have a meeting without me being there. And yeah. so I've got to find the strength now to be, you know, his um, advocate. And it is emotionally, it's emotionally draining when um, it's not just one person, it's at every event that we have you meet somebody that's going through something, whether it's people putting stuff through letterbox or someone being followed around at the supermarket and not getting an apology, but, you know, rude. You, you know, there's there's so much injustice going on. And then, But what I, you know, before I come to the end of this all, what I, I would, I want to know how do you manage to, because you absorb a lot of what injustices that goes on mm. where do you stop and put that down and hold on to your own sanity because when, I'm doing, when I'm doing when I'm doing my yoga when I'm doing my yoga or my pole dancing or surfing or whatever when I'm cooking when I'm dancing yeah I'm, I'm more aware these days of trying to get a balance and it's not unusual that I switch my phone off i never used to switch my phone off but now if something is too much i feel overwhelmed i turn my phone off and then i have my quiet time i let my family know that i'm turning the phone off so that they're not worried and then i just turn my phone off and just go back to this the, the here and now and enjoying my space i love that i love that um and as Debbie said, you can get there's so much more. Look, I what I, I know that you're getting moving it through the body. I love that. And Pantel said you're moving it through the body. You have shared beautifully today. Would you believe you're not the only one? Someone's ringing off my phone now, right? Um, you have shared beautifully today. I hope that your story and your message. Okay, yeah, I shouldn't still, I, now it's my turn. When Debbie was earlier, this she went on the phone. What, look, look at me now. As if, but uh, I am just finishing up and we are, we'll we're, be we're logging and signing out. I'll be coming downstairs. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> right. Um, 
you have been, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Graceful, truthful, candid, um, just beautiful is what I want to say to you today. Thank and, you. No, I'm being serious because it's that you didn't put on any ears and graces. You told your story. You told the truth. You didn't badmouth anybody. You actually just oh 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 as soon as I joined them, um, the various forums, I said, if the person to your left or to your right is not different to you, then you are not being part of um, the change that we need to see. It's all it's all well and good at having our own forums and whatnot, but everybody yeah. has to. I've been to Poland, I've been to Morocco, and I'm trying to go to different places, you know, so that. I can I can learn, and I'm I'm encouraging anyone I meet to do the same. So I'm um, back to politically what we're going to be doing. There's going to be race forum. Um, I've been encouraging diversity tra training. They asked me to host uh, Black History Month. I brought in some anti-racist trainers. I thought that I'm not going to have the platform at any other time. So this is what I want to leave people with: when you're given an opportunity, Opportunity to make a change because use it use it thank you to everyone in the chat room that's that said words to debbie she's oh god please don't freeze yeah she's frozen uh, oh, oh she's still I there thank you. yeah yeah no it's fine you're back to is there any questions said, um, no, no, when that was blah, blah, move it. So inspiring. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, someone says we've both got such beautiful energy. Um, and that's what I was trying to say to you, Debbie. That's what you have. You brought beautiful. And the message that you've just given out right now, what I'm gonna do is because this when this finish ends, um, I will be putting up everything, all this information, your book will go onto the website and people can then go on to it and pick up what they need where they can buy the book everything and i think that's why i said someone's tapping me to say my time is now up is it your time's up okay windrush i i i they'll hang me if i don't mention them we do go ahead i want to thank um fellow politicians for putting the motion through let's pay them stop the deportation um shut down home office they need a period of profound reflection i believe the um lessons report lessons learned report said so um keep keep up coming to the rallies people thank you and so happy much Heidi says lots of love to you um and blessings thank thank you. Alison was still there we want to say Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you again, Debbie. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for joining me. No, Thank no, you. it was my absolute pleasure. And to everyone in the chat room, to anyone who does watch this, the replay after it is Debbie. This is Debbie Allen. Please go out and buy her book. You can get them on Amazon. The first one is called Entangled Ode to My Lover. And please take the knee unfinished. No one's rushing me to get off here. My time ain't up. I'm still publishing it. God bless everybody out there. Please stay safe. Stay in love. Stay well. God bless you all. Good night. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, my darling.